Ladies and gentlemen, um, dear friends of the gaming industry, uh, a very warm welcome to the Nordic embassies. Um, my name is Pat Horison. I'm the ambassador of Sweden to Germany. I've been here, posted here since March of 2017, so quite a long time. Uh, but I'm very happy that we are now hopefully approaching the end of the pandemic. And since this is uh, a, uh, an event under 2G rule, you can drop your masks if you want to. That's, that's fine. <laughs> um, yes, and a warm welcome, of course, to, to this uh, very event. Uh, you might have uh, caught a glimpse of the exhibit upstairs. Uh, we call it Jarni, Medusa and an Elephant, the craft of Swedish game design. And it's been uh, up here since the end of September and will remain until Christmas. Um, and since we are uh, in uh, the Nordic embassies, let me just say a few words. Uh, what we have here is unique to the world. Five uh, sovereign countries decided to go together, build uh, a compound together, uh, with five individual embassies, all looking somewhat the same, but, but also uh, very different, uh, and to have this house for only events. Uh, it's called the Felles Hus, and Felles is uh, common or joint in uh, Danish and Norwegian, so we, we gave them that. Um, and the, uh, the whole compound was inaugurated in 1999, uh, and it was a success from the start. It was the second most popular tourist attraction in Berlin for the first couple of years. Uh, people came in buses just to, to see the architecture. So please have a look uh, around you uh, uh, when you, either in the coffee break or when you, when you leave. This being said, I think it's a very uh, fitting location for the exhibit, uh, which was developed by Arktis, that's the Swedish National Center for architecture and design, and the initiative came from Illustrators Centrum, Center for Illustrators, I, I guess. Um, and we've, in preparing this speech, we've had a look at some of the numbers when it comes to gaming, and I must say I'm, I'm stunned. Uh, for instance, uh, today we know that more than half of the population in the European Union uh, regularly plays uh, games. That means there are a lot of customers out there. Uh, the game industry itself has skyrocketed uh, over the uh, last decades. Today, uh, almost 7,000 jobs in Sweden, 11,000 jobs in Germany. And the good news is that there is already a lot of cross-border uh, cooperation uh, and the, the, the two industries are very uh, interlinked. Um, and one example of this is that Sweden currently is the largest investor in German games industry, three of the five largest uh, gaming com companies uh, have Swedish owners. The German computer games market drew, uh, grew by 32% last year, the Swedish grew by 40% and that's from an already very high level. Uh, today, uh, sales or last year's sales was around 3.3 billion euro uh, in Sweden. That's more than the whole of our uh, iron ore export. And iron ore is one of our major export products. Um, 19 Swedish computer games are already on the uh, stock exchange. And I think you know some of the most uh, well, internationally well-known games like Man Minecraft and Candy Crush Saga, both uh, developed in Sweden. Currently, there are more than 650 Swedish game studios, which I think is just staggering. And the result of all this is that every eighth person worldwide uh, has pl a place or has played a Swedish computer game. Uh, although I, I guess many of them <laughs> didn't really know it was a Swedish product. Um, and the, the idea of this event, of course, is to try and find new partnerships, bring the two industries in Sweden and Germany even closer together, and hopefully also uh, inspire a wider audience as we are filming uh, the uh, discussion. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our event partners. We have from the uh, German Games Industry Association Managing Director Felix Falk, 
Felix, uh, and the head of membership Ina Göring, Ina, uh, and also the spokesperson of the Swedish games industry, our old friend Per Strömbeck. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, excellent cooperation. And now I hope you will enjoy uh, the two days uh, full, full program. Uh, and please don't forget also to have a look at our exhibit, the Jarni exhibit upstairs. Uh, with these few words, I would like to hand over the floor to Per uh, to give an introductory remark uh, and look forward also to hearing uh, our, our other speakers. Uh, so thank you very much and enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, my name is Per Strömbeck. I'm uh, the spokesperson and CEO of the Swedish games industry. And uh, it's my pleasure to be the host and moderator for the, this event, Know Your Game, Sweden and Germany coming together. And we have a great show for you, ladies and gentlemen. All the topics that the ambassador touched upon, we will dig deeper into them. We will talk about technology and cutting edge artificial intelligence and how that applies to games. Uh, we will talk about um, public policy around games. We will talk about investment in games and this phenomenon that Sweden is such a big, the biggest investor in the German games industry. It's good timing because yesterday we released this report, my organization released this report, uh, the Swedish Game Developer Index. And uh, some of the numbers that the ambassador just quoted come from here. And we will dig deeper into these numbers, ladies and gentlemen. We will look behind the numbers. We have the author of the report here with us. Uh, and you will get the chance to ask her questions um, and maybe challenge her assumptions. Uh, and uh, we will also have a panel discussing strategies in investment and culture differences in German and Swedish games companies. And then we have a, a special world premiere uh, at, the, at the very end of today's show. So that's today and tomorrow we will continue and then we'll go more into the creative process of making games, the inspiration, the craft, the art and the technology of, of making games. And we will meet creators of the games in the exhibit and also some guests, uh, great game developers whose games are not present in this particular exhibit. And we will get different points of view from big games, small games, mobile games, AAA games, we call it sometimes. And uh, so I hope that um, that will also inspire you. Uh, so we have uh, a lot to talk about. Um, before we go into the program, I would like to say something uh, from my own heart. Um, so first, let me echo the thanks. Um, it's been a great collaboration with the embassy and the Bundesverband game. Um, uh, behind the numbers are games and behind the games are people. And many of, of the people behind these games um, are people like myself, uh, born in the 1970s, growing up with games in various kinds. Games were not cool back then. Let me tell you, in the 1980s schoolyard, people, the other people were not impressed if you had a really good character in Drakar och Demoner. Uh, that wouldn't get you invited to any cool innebandy disco. Uh, so our generation, the first generation that made the games industry, let's say, um, that started the games industry, or, or at least some of the companies, we come from a place where games are, have been treated as something difficult, problematic, even dangerous sometimes. Uh, that's, that's our childhood trauma. <laughs> that, and, and compare that with this, to be here at the Swedish embassy, being recognized as an important culture window, something for, for the official representation of Sweden to show to other countries. I don't know if those two worlds could be more far apart. <laughs> so this touches me deeply. 
Um, it's a great recognition. It's a great recognition. Uh, and one more thing. The exhibition is beautiful because it tells the story of how games come to life, how games come about, how games are made. A lot of exhibitions about games show the games, but this shows the process of making the game. And it breaks down the complexity. And I think as a, as a visitor to the exhibition, you both get the sense of um, wonder of the complexity, all the details that go into this, but also a sense of understanding, oh, this part actually I could contribute to. This is something that I understand. And so I think it's both um, uh, awe-inspiring and also inspiring in that games uh, can be part of everyone's life. So I, I hope you take the opportunity to also take a look uh, at the exhibition. And with those words, I would love to introduce my friend, my colleague, um, my, uh, my brother in arms in many of the European <laughs> debates that we find ourselves in sometimes, um, from Bundesverband game, Felix Falk. Big hand. Wow, thank you very much uh, for this introduction. Um, dear Mr. Ambassador, um, dear pair, um, it's a pleasure to, to uh, be part of this um, initiative and this partnership here. Um, and of course, uh, dear friends of the Swedish and German games industry, um, I thought uh, when you came up with this idea, that this would be a great example um, and a great thing to do. And we should, um, with, with many countries, do it even further and, and more often. So uh, it's, it's great to have this initiative here with the cooperation. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to once more um, welcome the, the Swedish games industry in Germany. I mean, uh, when you look into uh, the pro um, daily production work, it's a close cooperation anyway, uh, but it's great, great to have it in such a beautiful spot like uh, the Swedish embassy in Berlin. Um, I do have one um, professional view and one personal view on um, the a partnership between uh, the German and the uh, Swedish games industry. So first, the professional view. Of course, um, we've, we've already heard some impressive numbers. Of course, these numbers um, can be told for the German games industry as well, um, being uh, the largest, um, counting from revenue, the largest um, games industry in Europe. Um, it's it's um, impressive to see what in Germany has been developed over the last years. Just yesterday, we have seen uh, the first day of the new parliament, uh, so uh, the uh, Deutsche Bundestag, uh, all the um, members of parliament met for the first time, and uh, we are um, excited to see what kind of government will be built in the next weeks. But the great story is um, that um, of course, that has to be told in the in the embassy that when it comes to uh, the support by politicians, uh, the view has changed. As Pears has said, um, the view has, uh, on games and all on the potential of games, economically, culturally, also uh, when it comes to technology, has changed completely in the in the last years. Maybe you remember um, the visit of Angela Merkel uh, at Gamescom, um, giving high five to uh, Super Mario and. and and, you know, pictures going around the world. So that's already uh, some years ago. And the good um, news, even seeing Angela Merkel yesterday um, getting um, uh, her, um, um, her, how do you call it, um, her official certificate that she will not be longer in, um, in her role after the new um, government has, has been formed. Um, we, are, we are very happy that all the parties in the parliament are in favor of um, you know, pushing for the potentials of the games industry and games as a culture. So that's great. And no matter what kind of um, parliament and what kind of government will be built, um, I'm sure that um, we will see more, um, more of this support from also the governmental side. Um, we will see um, later more from Mr. Zass, who is uh, in the government um, and who is part of this force um, on, on, on the, you know, 
working for, for uh, the games industry and for the games fund and uh, driving everything which, which, which is needed since uh, the, the doors are open uh, for the support. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to your information and what you share with us. Um, so I think we are in great place, but we uh, want to be much better because when it comes to production and other things, there are some countries um, who have seen the potential much earlier and, and went there and, and helped the industry to, to grow much more. And that's why uh, when, when I come to Sweden, because that's where you can see a real uh, powerhouse for, for games and where you can see kind of, um, of an example in many ways where we can learn as, as um, even being biggest markets revenue wise. But when it comes, for example, for production, if you see the production outcome in Sweden, that's amazing. Uh, so we, we can learn from that. Also, uh, I want to uh, mention all the investments, acquisitions. So um, something we hardly ever have in Germany to collaborate in this kind of way. Uh, we, um, you named already um, um, how many companies are owned by Swedish in, in investors, and uh, that's something um, which is impressive and, and needs to um, be um, needs to be a part of the German games industry in the next coming years as well. And uh, one more example is uh, the great culture. I mean, we have a great culture in Germany, but when I remember, for example, um, the video you did and where you already uh, starred uh, in, in this video one year ago about the Swedish games industry, it's not just impressive to see the numbers, but it's also great to see this fun culture, this diversity, and, and something where I think it's a great fit between uh, Germany and um, and, and Sweden. So how I see this, sometimes people can also say um, this might, might be you know, a competition or something. That's completely not how I see it, because I rather see it uh, um, like as an Im inspiration. So it's, of course, some kind of, ins you know, it's, it's a positive uh, kind of uh, competition as a inspiration for each other and as a cooperation, because the games culture and also the production culture of games is completely global and we have international teams, very diverse teams, and we need the back and forth, we need the exchange uh, of people, of ideas and of creativity and that's uh, that's how we do it, we cooperate with each other and um, so I hope um, this partnership is one, just one example uh, for uh, what's, what's coming in the next years for the Swedish and the German games industry. And last but not least, I promised a personal story. It's not as deep as, as yours, I'm sorry, but um, not as emotional, but still my mother, um, she, she took her time to understand what I do and to, to think that this makes sense. Maybe that's common with, with your parents as well. But um, after a while, after some years, uh, she saw um, why this is important what we do and why there's a great example and why this is just one of the most amazing industry we are, we are in. But it took another couple of years until she played her first game uh, with me and it's only one game uh, we are playing um, and this is um, Quiz Duel. So it's a Swedish one, I have to confess. And I thought this, this might um, give a little personal note um, about my personal connection. So. Um, all the best for you for the next days, exciting discussions and interesting insights. And thank you for um, being able to do this cooperation with you. Looking forward to the future. Thank you.